Section 2.6 is mathematical modeling. So this first slide is very similar to the slide from 8.8. .8. Um, it goes through the steps of solving an application problem. The only thing I added was sometimes on these you're going to want to write the expressions in a specific form. Maybe originally you write it with two variables, but you need to get it down to one variable. So you'll have to use some knowledge or some given information for that. So this first problem gave us a point on the graph y equals x squared minus 8, and then it's going to ask us some questions about it. So first thing I want you to do is I want you to graph this function, and I want you to kind of read through the questions and think of any prior knowledge that you may need to help you solve this problem. So here I have graphed the parabola y equals x squared minus 8. It's a parent function that's been shifted down 8 along the y-axis. Um, I also have the point 0, negative 1 because that's what it talks about in part A. And I also plotted this arbitrary point P. We don't know where it goes, we just know that it has an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. In part A, we're talking about distance between two points. So I know that that's distance formula. So here I have the distance formula written down. The distance formula is the square root of the difference between the x-coordinates squared plus the difference between the y-coordinates squared. It's also the same thing as Pythagorean theorem. So for part A, we want to use this information to express the distance from point P, this arbitrary xy point, to the point 0, negative 1 as a function of x. So using all this information that we know, go ahead and pause the video and write an expression to represent this distance. We have two points. We have the point x, y, and we have the point 0, negative 1, and we want to find the distance between them. So I filled this in using distance formula x minus our other x coordinate, quantity squared, plus y minus our y coordinate of negative 1, quantity squared, square root the whole thing. But the question says we want it as a function of x, which means we don't want this y in here. We want to only have x as our only variable. So now we have to figure out how to, to replace y with something that has x's in it. So every point on this parabola fulfills the equation y equals x squared minus 8. That means that this point P, its y-coordinate, is whatever its x-coordinate is squared minus 8. So we could actually replace y with this x squared minus 8. So if we replace y with x squared minus 8 and leave everything else the same, we end up with a function in terms of just x. The distance with respect to x is the square root of x squared plus x squared minus 8 minus a negative 1, which becomes x squared minus 7, quantity squared. So now using this information, go ahead and pause the video and answer questions B and C. So given the fact that we already have a function for d, for parts b and c we're just plugging in values for x. So for part b we're plugging in x to be 0, so every time you see an x in the function you just plug in 0. You end up with 0 squared plus 0 squared minus 7 quantity squared, which is equal to the square root of 49, or just 7. So what this is asking is the distance between this point 0, negative 1, and the point on the parabola where x equals 0. So that would actually be down here at the vertex. So we're finding this green distance between 0, negative 1 and 0, negative 8. Part C is asking the same thing, but when x is equal to negative 1. So that would be this point right here, negative 1, negative 7. We're finding this distance, this purple distance here. So plug in negative 1 every time you see an x, and you end up with the square root of 37. So now that we have this, part D asks us to use a graphing calculator to graph this function and then use that graphing calculator to minimize D or find the X values where D is the smallest. So go ahead and pause the video and try that. So I use Desmos, so here is the function X squared, square root of X squared plus X squared minus 7 quantity squared. And you can see there's two minimum points. That's fine because we're just talking about coordinate points. You can have two, you can have a positive and a negative. So using Desmos, I found them to be plus or minus 2.55. Normally we want to go to three decimal places. I'm using Desmos, which only goes to two decimal places. But when you're using your graphing calculator, make sure you always go to three decimal places. Another common type are geometry type problems. So this one we have a right circular cone, that just means your typical cone, and water is being poured into it. It has a radius of 4 feet and a height of 16 feet, 
and we want to express the volume of the cone as a function of the height of the water. So they give us a hint down here. This is some, one that you should know. But the volume in terms of both the radius and the height is one-third pi r squared h. It's exactly one-third the volume of a cone, or excuse me, a cylinder that has that same radius and height. But we want it in terms of just the height. So we have to figure out how to write the height in terms of the radius. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use this information down here. Write circular cones, create similar triangles all the way up. So there's always a relationship between the radius and the height. So we can set up a ratio between the radius and the height. The radius to the height of the water is going to always be equivalent to the radius of the whole cone to the height of the whole cone. That's always going to be equivalent because they create similar triangles all the way up. That's the way that cones work. So now we can write the radius in terms of the height by cross multiplying. So 16r is equal to 4h and then r is equal to 1 fourth the height. So no matter what the radius is always one-fourth of the height. So now we can take this and we can plug that in for r in our original volume equation. So we get one-third pi times r, which is one-fourth the height, squared times the height. So if we simplify this a little bit, we're going to have one-sixteenth here when we square it. 16 times 3, so that means we're going to get 1 over 48 pi h cubed. So the volume in terms of the height is 1 48th pi h cubed. So again, we started with a function in terms of multiple variables. We had the volume in terms of both the radius and the height. We used, in this case, a geometric ratio to solve one variable in terms of the other, and then we were able to have the volume in terms of just the height. So I'm going to do one more. So we have another word problem. Two cars leave an intersection at the same time. One is headed south at a constant speed of 30 miles an hour, and the other one is headed west at a constant speed of 40 miles an hour. And we want to express the distance between these two cars as a function of time. So it always helps to draw these out first. We have one car that is heading south, and we have another car that is heading west. And we want to find the distance between those cars in terms of t. So first we have to figure out the distance each of those two cars traveled. So if the car is going 30 miles an hour, I want you to pause the video and try and figure out how far the two cars have traveled in terms of time t. And then I want you to use those distances to try and find the distance d between those two cars as a function of time. So first find the distances in terms of t of the two individual cars and then the distance in terms of t of how far apart those two cars are. So the car that's heading south, if it's going 30 miles an hour, remember distance equals rate times time. So the distance of the car that's heading south is going 30 miles an hour times how much time has passed, so t. And the car that's going west is going 40 miles an hour time how, times how much ever time has passed, which is t. So its distance is 40t. So the car going south is 30t, and the car going west is 40t. So now, knowing this, and knowing that in most cases an intersection creates a right angle, I want you to find, try and find the distance in terms of t, or in terms of time, of how far apart these two cars are. So this creates a right triangle, so Pythagorean theorem, the distance is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, which in this case would be 30t squared plus 40t squared. You might have jumped straight down and said, hey, it's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, so 30, 40, 50, 
or you could have done the whole Pythagorean theorem. Either way, you would end up with the distance with respect to time is equal to 50t. So these two cars are always going to be 50 miles times how much ever time has passed apart. These problems just take practice, knowing how to set the problem up, knowing where to plug different things in, but you're always looking to write these as a function of a variable. Usually you start with two variables, like in the previous examples, and simplify down to writing in terms of one variable, but it's all just following the steps. What do I know and how can I apply this knowledge?